Greetings, we are back in Senior English A, and uh, we are now going to make some final observations about 3-4, and then we're going to listen to this famous scene. I want to go to 3 uh, in, your, in your notes. I want to go to 3A real quickly, comparison of text. And I want to point out that in both Hamlet as well as Macbeth, we will have the instantiation of the apparition, the ghost. Okay? Shakespeare can use this idea because people of his day genuinely believed in ghosts. I say it that way, and then Mr. Brown, I have to check myself, because the top films right now, like Exorcist, and some of those other kinds of films that you guys like, like Paranormal and some of that kind of stuff, where people get really freaked out about what ghosts, for lack of a better term. So I don't, I don't know to what degree we've stopped believing in this, Mr. Keeley. I suppose you could make the argument that we're a postmodern culture that still has pre-modern ideas, right? And we still kind of have these. They, I mean, ghosts still freak us out, and uh, ghosts really freaked out Shakespeare's audience. And so Banquo is going to come on to the stage. One of the reasons you like to go and watch this performance is to find out how will they do this scene. For your notes, there's two ways to do this scene, okay? Two ways to do this scene. One way is to bring Banquio, the actor, on stage with a knife sticking out of his head or with blood all over his face or with these really bad gash marks all over him. Blood coming down. When you watch the Roman Polanski film version, you'll see that they make Banquio look like he just got bludgeoned with a bat about 40 times. I mean, he looks bad, okay? That's one way to do it. But, Mr. Keeley, another interesting way to do it that I've seen is to have no Banquio ghost apparent. That, like you can see it. You clearly know Macbeth is freaked out. And you clearly know that he's seeing something. And you then are put in the same position as those guys that are sitting around the table at the party. But there's actually no character there. It's an empty seat that Macbeth sees as a filled seat. Do you got me? Uh, and then you get to kind of decide which one of those two things work. I mean, for example, if a good actor's playing Macbeth, he can freak out an audience by himself being freaked out. He can totally do that. And in so doing, the audience then begins to use the imagination. Lady Macbeth figures it out. Let's just call it what it is. Scene three, uh, uh, scene four of act three. Lady Macbeth finally figures it out. Now I'm gonna use another 3A observation. In some ways, Lady Macbeth plays Dr. Frankenstein. How, 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 do you, how do you understand me saying this? Lady Macbeth plays Dr. Frankenstein. She created a monster. She created a monster. And in th Act 3, Scene 4, she finally realizes it. It's the oh crap moment. It's the I created something, just like Frankenstein, I cannot control it. <coughs> And now, Lady Macbeth will begin to see as the broken woman. She's already had not ha had all spent, right? Remember, she's already seen things didn't go according to plan. But now she realizes that her man has gone over the edge. We will know how far Macbeth has gone over the edge by the end of 3-4. Go ahead and look on your, uh, in your book real quickly as... Uh, as, as um, we finish this scene on page 386. At the very end of the scene, Macbeth will say that he's not done, that there's more killing left to be done. He's killed Duncan. He's killed Banquo. He's tried to kill Fleance, Banquo's son. Now he will point his laser on Macduff. And we're on page 386, and Macbeth will say, I hear it, by the way, talking about Macduff, but I will send, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to uh, figure out what's going on with Macduff. Why isn't Macduff at my party? He's already suspecting Macduff. There's not a one of them, but in his house, I keep a servant feed. What does that mean? What does that mean? I've got a spy in every house. Macbeth is unable to relax, right? around the uh, people that he's spending time with. Why? Because he's a criminal. And this is the terrible thing about criminals. They never can relax because there's always a, they're always afraid somebody's going to do them what they obviously plan to do to other people. Keep reading. I will tomorrow, and be times I will, to the weird sisters 
At the end of this scene, Macbeth decides, I got to go back to the witches. How is that different from the way he met the witches the first time? Beautiful, Frog. That's right. They came to him in the first moment. Now he's going to seek them out. I got to go. Why do you think he's going to go to the witches? Why does he need to go back to the witches? What is Macbeth interested in? He wants to know the future. Why? What is it about the future he's most concerned about, given the screw-up of his plan? Fleance got away. So obviously what he really wants to know is, what? Am I safe? Yeah, am I safe? As a king, am I safe? Or I got to worry about this Fleance kid growing up to take over the kingdom. Keep reading. More shall they speak. For now, wow, look at this. This tells you everything you need to know about the downfall of Macbeth. I'm reading on page 386, line uh, roughly 133 or so. For now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. Put it in your own words. What's he say? I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. Meaning what? From the Weird Sisters he says... I want to know the worst that can happen to me. And the way I got to do that is the, the worst thing imaginable, going to witches. It's kind of like selling your soul to the devil. He says, I'm willing to do that. Keep reading. You'll see just how far he's gone. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. Now, Mr. Durant, we have a vocab word here that comes from the ancient Greek mythologies. We call this narcissism. Are you familiar with the phrase narcissism? A narcissist is someone who what? Are you familiar with that word? What is a narcissist? Only cares about himself or herself. Did you see what Macbeth just said? Now this is the king speaking. For my own good, all I care about is what? What's he say? Interestingly, who's he saying this to? The woman he's supposedly in love with. He doesn't even include her in the matrix anymore. The only thing that matters is me. I want to know what's going to happen to me. He has become completely egocentric. All he cares about, narcissistic, all he cares about is himself. Wait a minute, we're not done. If that was all that it was, he would be like a one or two high school boys. All I care about is myself, right? But it's way worse than that. Keep reading what he says next. For mine own good all causes shall give way. I, this is a brutal word picture, I am in blood steeped in so far that should I wade no more, <coughs> returning were as tedious as go or. Now one of the reasons we read Shakespeare is so we can learn how to read. And some of you will read those lines and say, I have no idea what you just read, but I'm going to go back and look at it again. And I'm going to begin by asking a simple word picture. Keller, what is the word picture here? Go back and look at it again. I am in blood, line 137. I am in blood steeped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as going o'er. There's one word picture that unlocks all of this. What is the word picture? He's imagining himself standing in what? Blood. But not just any blood. How much blood? A river of blood. He's standing in the Bighorn River and he's gone of blood. And he says he's so far out into the river that going back, what? What's going back? Going back would mean what, though? Going back out of the river would mean what in regards to killing and murder? Stop. Right, to say, okay, dude, dude, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop. He says, I'm so far into the river that going back is just as difficult as getting to the other side. Whoa, 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 what has he just said? Uh, there's no point in stopping now. Dude, we start jacking people. I mean, really? What's the difference between killing 30 people and killing 3 people? Macbeth says bloody little. No pun intended with the bloody. Right? Bloody little. I mean, once you start killing people, what's the difference? Right? 3, 4, 40, 400... 4,000, 4 million. Dude, it's, I mean, wait a minute. What is the point he's making about his soul? It's, it's over. It's over. It's over. In other words, I've done enough. 
that I know where I'm going to be in regards to Dante's Inferno. Do you understand the point? It's not like all of a sudden he says, I'm going to die, and then go, uh, yeah, uh, oh, about that, about that infraction, that slight indiscretion of killing one or two people, I hope you'll be willing, no, no, no. Macbeth is aware his soul is damned. But he says, no point in stopping now. I've already started jacking people. I'm standing in a river of blood. No point in going backwards. You can't undo it. Hello, it's not like you can, uh, you know, dig Duncan out of the ground and say, hey, dude, dude, just kidding. You know, that whole thing about the knife and the skull. It's just a joke. Oh, Bankrio, welcome back, dude. No. No. Can't, you can't undo some things. So instead of saying, sorry, sorry, I should, I should get help, he says, I'm just going to keep killing. Who's he say this to? His wife. Right? He says this to his own wife. Who's the one who said, Mr. Keeley likes to remind us, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Your book, your face, my thing, is as a book where men may read strange matters. Remember? A little water cleanses us of the deed. Infirm of purpose, she called him. Woo, woo, woo. Infirm of purpose? You wimp. That's what she called him. He says, now, I'm into this killing thing. I'm starting to get good at it. I'm going to go talk to those witches and figure out what's going on. By the way, where was Macduff? He wasn't at our... By the way, we know when we investigate mass murderers, we know this is exactly the way they think. Their thinking is different from normal people's thinking. Their view is, really? What's the difference between killing three people and killing 30 people? You see it as a difference in number. But if you're thinking about losing your soul, that is to say, acting in such a way that you have so much guilt you can't come back from it, think about it. After you've killed three, it's done. Right? You might as well just go ahead and keep doing it. Question. Let's play Mr. Staub, our school counselor, for a moment. You get to be Mr. Staub. Macbeth comes in to you and says, Dude, I started killing. I might as well just keep killing because I can't be saved. I can't be redeemed. I can't be changed. What would you say? Would you agree with him? Yeah. Would you agree with him? Would you say, yeah, dude, you're totally right. You're over. I mean, it's like going over a waterfall. You're over it. There ain't no coming back. Or would you say to him, no, 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 that's not it at all. You haven't actually gone over the waterfall yet because you're still alive. You're still redeemable. You're still savable. All you got to do is admit what you did was wrong and pay for the consequences, even if that means your own death. Think of what happened to the original Thane of Cowder, remember? Nothing became his life like the losing it. He died as one studied in his death. In other words, he, he manned up. He manned up. He said, yeah, yeah, my bad. I shouldn't have done that treason thing. I'll jack myself. Right? In the Roman Polanski film, they show him with the chain thing around his neck. They let him jump. He, may, he gets to make the decision, doesn't he? Is Macbeth lost entirely? Or can you, can you imagine that he could come back? Are there some people who cannot be saved? Are there some people who are so far gone, it's over? Notice, we don't call them prisons. What do we call them now? We call them institutions of rehabilitation. That's what we call them. What does to rehabilitate mean? <coughs> to bring back to its former state. In other words, you try and fix people. You take criminals and you say, no, 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 that's how you were. Now we're going to try and make you something else. We're going to put you in programs and educate you and blah, blah, blah. Is there anything a school counselor can do for Macbeth? No. Ramos says it's done, it's over. No hope. There's no hope for this guy. Uh, by the way, let's point out we are in the act, third act. We're in the third act of a five-act play, and you're telling me you figure it's over, which can only mean... Things have got to get worse. They ain't going to get no better. If you're figuring it's hopeless, right? Which is make, going to make this one depressing play. I got anybody that wants to argue it isn't hopeless. No one is ever completely hopeless as long as he or she is still alive. 
What do you think, Nelson? Is there ever a moment when it's totally hopeless? Um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't believe that. I, I think that there's always always hope. Always hope. For Macbeth could Macbeth, Macbeth could be turned around. He hasn't gone too far. If you were Mr. Stop, you would say to him, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! You got the way wrong word picture." You're not that far out into the river yet. It just looks that way. The Bighorn River is a big river. It looks like you're midway. You're not midway. You're, not, you're, you're just a couple of steps in. Dude, technically you've only killed two people. Well, those bodyguards, they were kind of like, yeah, but they knew they were going to get jacked anyway. Yeah, that's true. Once you start numbering up the, the number of people, he's already, he's already jacked. But Nelson says, you could talk him back. You could bring him back. What do you think, Judice? Can you save Macbeth and people like him? Or is it over? Do you just take him out behind a shed with a put a bullet in his head? Because it's done. You ain't going to bring this guy back. Padilla, can you save this guy? And people like him. Padilla says, I don't think so, Nelson. There ain't no hope. What are you going to do? You going to say something to this cat? You going you gonna, to you gonna give him some kind of counseling? He's done. Nelson says, you don't understand. I, I want to believe that no one is without, totally without hope. What do you think, Keeley? Can you save these kinds of people? Keeley says, that's why God made bullets. You put one in a brain and they're done. <laughs> that, you, say, you save them from themselves, you save them from society. Done. What do you think, Durant? Can you save a guy like this? Durant says, from the confines of the play, Mr. Nelson, <laughs> this play is destined to be a tragedy. He doesn't seem a, see a happy Hollywood ending here. No way to save him. No way. Look at what he says next. Strange things, as if we don't have this as, as a guess. Strange things I have in head... <coughs> <laughs> that will to hand. Put it in your own words. Strange things I have in head that will to hand. I got all kinds of creative ways to bung people. Oh man, I've been, that's what I do at night. I sit up at night thinking about the ways I'm going to get to jack guys. And Macduff is next in line. Look what he says next. Which, look what he says, must be acted Ere they may be scanned. What does that mean? I don't want to think about it. No thinking. I'm just going to what? I'm just going to do it. Whatever comes to my brain, that's what I'm going to do. Lady Macbeth, interestingly, she does not get it. In the same way that Frankenstein originally didn't get it. That he had created this monster and then he had a serious problem. Look what she says, top of page 388. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. What is Lady Macbeth's solution to this problem? Just go to bed. You need to go to bed. <laughs> you need a nap. That's your problem. You just need a nap. If you go to sleep, you're gonna see, you're gonna be so much better when you wake up. Really? I mean, you talk about major deniability going on here. She's aware that he killed Duncan. She's aware that he killed two bodyguards. She's aware that he killed Banquio and tried to kill Flance. Let's call it four and a half murders because you got to factor in the intentionality part of it. And she says to him, she's aware he's going to now try and jack Macduff, who, by the way, is the number one stud warrior in all of Scotland. <coughs> and her one comment is... You just need a nap. That's your problem. You just need a nap. We, we, in psychological terms, we call these enablers, don't we? What's an enabler? An enabler is an individual who does not call out the individual, but says, oh, you poor thing, you need a nap. That's your problem. Dude, we are at the end of a scene where Macbeth just saw ghosts, and she thinks he needs a nap. Of course, we know he ain't going to get no nap because he can't what? And why can't he sleep? He, he's got a guilty conscience. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Does he have a conscience? 
does Macbeth feel guilty for what he's done? Because if he feels guilty, Miss Padilla, this seems to validate what, Wilson, what Nelson was saying. Nelson said, there's always hope. As long as you feel guilt, there's hope. Because that means you feel sorry for what you did, which means there's coming back. Michael says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is a complicated dis uh, situation here. Macbeth feels guilt, but not enough to want to change. Keeley might say, I don't know how much guilt he feels. He feels anxiety or fear. That's why he's going to go back to the witches. Why? Because he wants to hold on to his power. It's got nothing to do with feeling bad about killing those people. Macbeth will say, yeah, yeah, sure, sleep, yeah. Take a look at what he says. Come, yeah, right, we'll sleep. There's all kinds of interesting kind of sexual undertones here. Yeah, you're right. Let's just go make love. We'll fix that. That'll solve everything. My strange and self-abuse, interesting, self-abuse, is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Whoa. Cruz says that is seriously messed up. What does that mean? We are yet but young indeed? Amspa just shakes his head. He's like, man, you're right. This is one way wicked play. This guy that Shakespeare creates, what has he just said? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a little sleep so when I get up, I got a little more energy so I can do what? Find more creative ways to bone people. You're absolutely right. Let's go get some sleep. Of course, the audience will be looking at whose face when he says that. Because they ain't but two people on stage. Lady Macbeth, who's looking at her man going, Whoa. I got no... I, I call this guy a wimp? I'm the one that challenged him with that whole manhood thing. You're not... You don't, you don't have the set to be able to do what you got to do. Whoa. Don't seem to have a problem with masculinity now, do we? Little bit of testosterone release going on here. Lady Macbeth's got no ability to control this cat. She helped create him, Keeley's right. And now, he's on autopilot. Whatever comes to my brain, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't like the way you look, I'm gonna jack you. It does not matter. <laughs> And don't talk about anything about fairness involved in it, because the only thing that's fair is, for my own good, all causes shall give way. Whew. Brutal. All right, let's listen to this. It's a fun scene. You will know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, a hearty welcome. Thank you, Your Majesty. Ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. So now this is for me, say to all our friends, for my heart speaks, they are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks. Both sides are even. Here I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth, and on to the a measure the table round. Bancroft, it is better be without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut, but I did poison. Thou oh, art the best of the cutthroats. Yet he's good to do the life of Fiance. If thou didst it, thou art a non pareil. Most royal sir, Fiance did escape. Fears. But Banquo save I, my good lord, safe in a ditch he bides with twenty trenchant gashes in his head. At least the death to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present can be gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The feast is sold, that is not often vouchfied to the making is given with welcome. Feed were best at home. But 
commends the souls to me this ceremony, meeting will bear without you. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. Here have we now our country's honor roof for the great person of our bankroll present. Who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance? His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is that moves, your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it! Never shake thy door in aught to me! Gentlemen, rise, his highness is not well. Sit worthy, friends. My lord is often thus and hath been promised since pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary, for the thought he will again be well. If much too loathe him, we shall offend him and extend his fashion. See and regard him not. Are you a man? Are you a man, sir? The dear of combat which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stop. This is the very pain of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to die. Because you were well. There's flaws and starts, imposters to true fear. The well become a woman's story to which a spy authorized by Because you were woman. Shame itself, why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on the stool. What do you see there? He's like, can't you see it? Why, what care I? If thou canst nod, speak too. If charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monument shall be the moors of pipes! Not quite a land in play. If I stand here, I saw him. I foresee. Blood had been shed ere now. In the olden time, ere humane statute purged the gentle wheel. Aye, and since two murders have been performed too terrible for the ear. The time has been to run the brains while our dumb man would die and there an end. But the will be rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all, then I'll sit down. I'm better now. Give me some wine. Fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table and to our dear friend Bakwo, whom we miss. Would he were here! Well, then he shuts up. To all and him we thirst, and all's all. Our duty is at the place. <laughs> Avaunt and quit my sight, let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are malevolent, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou didst glare with. Think of this good fear, but as a thing of custom, tis no honor. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare, I dare? The Bronx are like a rugged Russian bear. The armed rhinoceros or the Hurkan tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerve shall never tremble, or be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit then, protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! <laughs> Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. <laughs> you have displaced the mirth. They all think he's whack. Broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe. When now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What? Why, sir, my lord? I pray you speak not. He goes worse and worse. Question in rages. It was once good night. Stand not on the order of your going, but go at once. Good night. Uh, and better health attend his majesty. <laughs> A kind good night to all. His will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move, 
and trees to speak, augurs and understood relations beheld by maggot pies and shops and rooks brought forth the secrets man of blood. What is the night? Almost the dark of morning, which is which. How oh, sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send him, sir? I hear it, by the way. But I will send. There's not a one of them, but in his house I keep a servant feed. I will tomorrow, and betimes I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good all cause shall give way. I am in blood stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go or Strange things I have in head that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all nature. See? Come, wheel to sleep. <laughs> My strange and self abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Brutal. Jot down uh, real quickly in your notes, what do you find the best part of this scene? Is it for you when Macbeth kind of starts to lose it with the uh, ghost showing up? Is it for you when uh, Lady Macbeth steps in and says, don't worry, don't worry, he's fine, he's fine, and all the, uh, all the other people are like, your husband's a complete whack job. No, 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 he's been like this all his life. Do you find the compelling moment at the end of the scene when Macbeth will say, blood will have blood, they say. What does that mean? Blood will have blood, they say. Right. In the end, that's it. In the end, everything comes full circle. You can, you can kill somebody, but sooner or later, you got to live with your actions. Let's talk about a 3B observation here. We already, now that we've lived two decades in our own life, we can say 100% true. At least one time in our life, we can say this. You do something without realizing you got to live with that something. You don't get it at the time. You don't understand it at the time. It might be something we say. It might be something we do. It might be something we don't say or something we don't do. And at the time, it's kind of thoughtless, like, hey, no big deal, whatever. And then you get to live with it. And there's no kind of undoing it on that count. It's like you can't, there's no take backs, metaphorically speaking, symbolically speaking. Blood will have blood. It's all, it, all comes, it all comes full circle. All right, let's go now quickly to, uh, to, this, uh, to this next scene. It's a fascinating one. Um, we are in, uh, we're, we're in 3-5 uh, now. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm with you on page 388. This is a real brief scene, but let's go ahead and talk it through real quickly. There is some debate, I'm with you on page 388, there is some debate about whether Shakespeare actually wrote this scene. There is some debate that maybe this scene gets thrown in to the play after Shakespeare's death, and then later when the folios are collected, this scene stays in. One of the things I want you to write down in your notes is, why would anybody assume that? How does the language of this scene sound different from other language? We're going to be back to the witches. Only here we're going to have another witch we have not met in the play. Her name is Hecate. Hecate is the queen witch. She shows up and she's just a little bit torqued because the